on Evening Magazine. I'm Jim Dever at CenturyLink Field, where the 12th man is going to chew his way to victory this weekend. I'm Michael King in Tacoma with a comedian who says he never would have made it to the big time if his parents weren't deaf. I'm saying Brian will explore a kingdom of ethnic eateries all within two blocks of each other. It's Cheap Eats, White Center. And world champion skier Patrick Deneen says training in the Cascade crud could be his secret to Olympic gold. And I'm Kim Holcomb at the Moore Theater, where they have a new show called Jerry Springer, The Opera. But first tonight, Oscar nominations were announced this morning. And guess whose name they called? And Bob Nelson for Nebraska. King Five and Almost Live alum Bob Nelson was nominated for his original screenplay. The movie Nebraska received six nominations in all, including Best Picture. Congratulations to Bob. So well deserved. And now to the other thing on everyone's minds, the Seahawks. Remember last week we showed you that giant beast burger that they're serving at CenturyLink? Well, it was such a resounding success, they decided they needed a sequel. Right, Jim Dever? That's right, Kim. I can't vouch for its nutritional content, but I can say this food's got the spirit. They come in colors not found in nature, but fit right in at the home of the Hawks. We brainstorm. We start playing with the food, bringing in some, some local vendors. Try to just make it pop. The Danger Russ dog was inspired by quarterback Russell Wilson, who, by the way, fully approves. We asked him. He, he's totally down for it. Locally sourced blue and green chips form the centerpiece of the 12th man nachos. With the nacho cheese on there, pico de gallo, some fresh uh, cut jalapenos, some scallions, and some red pepper as well. What's blue and green and battered all over? Try the boom, boom, battered corn dogs. Boom, battered corn dogs. Blue and green, homemade batter, hand dipped. But there's bacon bits inside of the of the batter. You serve them with uh, Seahawks green mustards. And if you're sweet on the Hawks, you'll love the 12 layer, 12th man layer cake. Skittles inside of it, blue and green, um, vanilla cream, and um, sponge cake as well. So from the famous Beast Burger, sold over a thousand last game, to champion chip cookies. So something extra for these awesome fans out here. CenturyLink Field is at the top of their game for taming. I can taste the bacon bits. Go hawk. That's okay, Jimmy. You just keep eating. Well, St. Brian is back on the hunt for great food at great prices. That's the whole philosophy behind our segment called Cheap Eat. What have you got for us tonight, Saint? White Center is a great place for cheap but really good ethnic food. And to show me around, I've got one of White Center's great champions, Eileen Sisson. You're right. We celebrate our diversity through our food, so let's go try it out. All right. Our first stop in this neighborhood of ethnic eateries is the Salvadorian Bakery and Restaurant on Roxbury. Are you looking for lunch or sweets? For nearly 20 years, this has been the place to sugarcoat your sweet tooth and get your pupusa prescription filled. You just make a little tortilla, put it in the center of your palm. So this is uh, beans and cheese and, and a little bit of pork. And it's ready to go. And we make thousands of pupusas every day. These traditional meals are just two fifty. You can eat it any way you want, but I'm told you're supposed to eat it with your hands. That is good. What's working together all these years been like for these two Salvadorian sisters? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Aminta has staked out the kitchen. Anna shares her smile with customers. When you come, save room for the best tray leches cake in the state. A traditional sponge cake made from three kinds of milk just a hint of rum. Wow, it's incredibly rich and it's delicious. And yeah, that's all I want. <laughs> the next stop on our White Center food walk, Pho White Center, where every dish doesn't just taste good, it looks good. And look at the pride in the uh, presentation. You get two spring rolls for three seventy-five. dollars Pretty much you eat with your eyes first. The chef with the perfectly coiffed hair wants everything to look just right. Mostly my mom. She really likes to decorate food and everything. Yeah. She's an artist? <laughs> yeah, she is. The homemade broth is marinated for three days before it's served. This is a small? Yeah, this is a small. And then the chicken is small. 625. The kind of savory meal that has made pho Seattle's comfort food. Our final stop, La Fondita Number no. Two, 
a busy taco truck that has been parked off 15th Avenue for more than 11 years. During lunchtime, it's complete chaos sometimes, but it's totally aimed at getting you in, get your food, and get you back to work. If you miss lunch, swing by for happy hour after 2 p.m. What makes it happy? Great deal. <laughs> like 69 cent tacos. You want a taco to be greasy. You want it to be dripping. That's a sign of a very good taco. This stuff drips all over you. It's great. A mecca for cheap ethnic cuisine, White Center is well worth a foodie's visit. Thanks, Saint. Well, as we mentioned before, we are here at the Moore Theater. It is Seattle's oldest operating theater, opened in 1907 originally. It recently underwent some renovations, and it looks better than ever. And right now, there's a production here that has a lot of people talking because it's an opera based on the Jerry Springer show. Surrender your mortal soul, let life swallow you up whole. There's only so much from the production we can play without a lot of bleeping. But this is, in fact, an opera, because virtually every word is sung. I'm a bit of an ignoramus when it comes to opera, but um, my wife is a classically trained opera singer, and she assures me it is opera. Strangely enough, my wife is also uh, opera trained. So I didn't know that, so... Wait, are we married to the same woman? <laughs> That'd be a Jerry Springer episode. I'll say it. Brandon Felker plays Jerry Springer, who goes to purgatory and meets Satan, played by Sean Nelson, best known as the lead singer of indie rock band Harvey Danger. There's also familiar imagery from Springer's show, like onstage fights and dancing clansmen. It's really satirical. It's whipped up into, uh, it's almost farcical even. It's like so ridiculous. It's bold. There are some things that are said in the show that are, if not profound, then at least, you know, real and challenging. And uh, I wouldn't have been that interested in doing the show had it not had that component. The theaters received some angry emails about the show, but the critics love it. And so too made the real Jerry Springer. The first review came out for this show and it was really positive and so Springer supposedly it's, it's his handle, but we don't know if it's actually him, actually retweeted the review. A positive from the man who made it big by going negative. Jerry Springer, the opera, runs through January 26th right here at the Moore.